Can I ask the Prime Minister this? In that region, there are 17 million people living in hunger and food shortage. We've had years of bombardment of the people of Yemen by weapons supplied by Britain from Saudi Arabia. And we have this dreadful conflict going on in Gaza where there are 30,000 people dead or missing. Where is the comprehensive plan by the Western nations to try to bring about a comprehensive peace across the whole region rather than pumping more and more weapons and money in to more and more conflicts, which will get worse? Does he have any hope for the future that there will be a lessening of conflict rather than the present very rapid increase in it? Well, Mr Speaker, I do have hope, uh, and that's because as we and others take action to degrade and disrupt the capability of those who are malign actors in the region, that will actually give the space for positive voices to build the peace that all of us want to see and to allow everyone to live side by side with dignity and security and opportunity. Uh, and uh, the Honourable Gentleman pointed out some of the humanitarian strife that people are suffering. As I pointed out, we should be proud in this House of our record. We have committed over a billion pounds of aid in Yemen since the conflict began in 2014. As I said, we are currently providing food to at least 100,000 people every month, life-saving health care to 400 facilities. And it's worth pointing out that Yemen is entirely reliant for food on imports largely by sea. And the Houthis' attacks are actually <laughs> serving to prolong the humanitarian suffering that Yemeni people are seeing. It's disrupting the very supply of the food that both he and I and everyone in this house would want to see delivered to those people. Thank you, 71% of the British public want a ceasefire in Israel Gaza. That's according to a latest YouGov poll taken just last month. Yet last week the government launched airstrikes in the Red Sea, an escalation of the situation in the Middle East. I understand that the government may not have been under any constitutional obligation to take a parliamentary vote um, on this particular military action or indeed abide by a result of that vote should it have even decided to take one. But does the Prime Minister believe he has any duty towards the government has any duty towards the British public when making such decisions and to the parliamentary community yeah. who represent the British people in building any political support for this military action? Yeah. Prime Minister. Mr. Mr Speaker, the, uh, the Leader of the Opposition made the point in his remarks, rightly, that we need to make sure that malign actors elsewhere would not try and distort what we have done for their own purposes. But I would gently say to the Honourable Lady to conflate and link our action against the Houthis with the situation in Israel Gaza just gives ammunition to our enemies who would seek to make things worse in the region. We have acted in self-defence. I've explained the reasons and the processes that we have followed and the accountability that I have to Parliament, which I am now here discharging. And separately, we will, of course, work very hard to bring humanitarian aid into Gaza and to try and bring about the sustainable ceasefire that we all, of course, want to see. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. The Foreign Secretary said yesterday that the purpose of the airstrikes in Yemen was to send a message. But the message that we intend to send isn't necessarily the message that gets received. And the message seems to have been sent to many in the region that the UK is intervening in the war very clearly on the side of Israel. So what plans does the government have to manage and contain the escalation that is likely to ensue? Because simply proclaiming that this activity was intended to be limited, not escalatory, does not make it so. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's why we took this action as a last resort after extensive attempts at diplomacy, including a UN Security Council resolution. And again, the Honourable Lady could help because this Parliament can speak with one voice that the outside world and our allies in the region know that this does have nothing to do with Israel and Gaza and has everything to do with our self-defence. Yeah. I appreciate why the Prime Minister is not trying to link this to Gaza, but the reality is the longer the Gaza <coughs> war goes on, the greater the instability in the Middle East will, will take place. It's nearly a hundred days since he gave his first statement after the terrible, horrendous actions by, by Hamas. And he justified the actions this week with regard to protection of maritime rights. In that hundred days, 7,000 Palestinian children have been killed. What effective action is he taking to protect the right to life of Palestinian children? And what effective action is he taking to prevent 
what is in reality the indiscriminate killing of Palestinian children by the Israeli Defence Force. Here, here. <laughs> Prime Minister. Mr Deputy Speaker, as I said, we are deeply concerned about the devastating impact of the fighting in Gaza on the civilian population. Too many people have lost their lives already, uh, and that is why we continue to call for international humanitarian law to be respected and for civilians to be protected. It's something that I uh, continually raise with Prime Minister Netanyahu when I speak to him, and it is why we're doing absolutely everything we can to get more aid into Gaza to help those children and everyone else affected by what is happening. The right of innocent passage is a fundamental principle of international law, and it cannot be interrupted by non-state actors. And although he may wish it wasn't the case, international law isn't a menu. It comes as a package, and we cannot pick and choose what bits we want to uphold and what bits we want to ignore. So the Prime Minister unable to see how ignoring Israel's egregious breaches in Gaza while purporting to act in defence of it in Yemen actually undermines international law and the rules-based order. No, Mr Speaker. Uh, Israel has the right to act in self-defence against Hamas, which conducted a terrorist attack on them, and we continue to call for international humanitarian law to be respected and for civilians to be protected in that conflict. The death and destruction in Gaza is intolerable, with well over 20,000 children and innocent civilians already killed by Israeli forces, more than 100 Israeli hostages still held by Hamas, and the real risk of an escalating wider regional conflict. We desperately need an end to the violence. So, Can the Prime Minister explain exactly what diplomatic progress he has achieved towards securing a sustainable ceasefire and peace in Gaza? Can I uh, thank the Honourable Gentleman for, I think, being uh, the first member opposite to actually remind the House that Hamas still holds 100 Israeli hostages. Uh, and it's good that he pointed that out. Uh, and he's right, we, we are continuing to do everything we can to bring about that sustainable ceasefire, uh, whether it's working with the Qataris and others to secure the release of hostages and put more aid into Gaza, because I want to see what he wants to see. No one wants to see this conflict go on for a moment longer. Uh, it must be a sustainable ceasefire, and that's what we will work hard to bring about. Mr Speaker, past mistakes in the Middle East should have taught this House that military intervention starting out as limited can quickly escalate, risking a sequence of events far larger and more terrible and risk even dragging us into war. It is for this reason, according to reports in The Times, that Foreign Office officials were, and I quote, incredibly nervous about last week's military assault in Yemen. Driving the region's instability is Israel's horrifying assault on Gaza, which has now lasted more than 100 days. So rather than giving Israel the green light to continue its brutal bombardment of Gaza and risking a wider conflict, will the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister seek to de-escalate the situation and call for an immediate ceasefire? Prime Minister. Uh, perhaps the Honourable Lady would, would do well to call on Hamas and the Houthis to de-escalate the situation. Andrew Percy.